We did animation music and we did two Miles Davis tunes. And they do they do knew who Miles Davis was. So when I said Miles Davis, big round of applause. So I thought, well, what the heck? Among friends. And uh, yeah, they had no complaints, man, and we got into it, man, you know. Uh, I think the guys realized that they didn't know and we didn't care. I mean, in terms of like how far we could take it. We were just gonna go as far as we could. And the beautiful thing about this is their first taste of American music was not some stupid crap, you know, uh, nostalgia jazz. You know, it wasn't like trying to introduce the swing era to a non-dance culture. We gave them essentially music that they could relate to rhythmically. And uh, they like funk, they like funky stuff, they like groove, you know, big time. Because music in that part of the region is based on groove. It's not so much our Western harmony. You know? We just added some some post Webern harmony to the mix, which is basically drum and bass groups. So the difference between the U.S. and Iran is simply the Iranians. It's run by the Minister of Guidance and Culture. It's not run by a corporate front or a cutout or a, or a. Uh, an amateur organization or a bunch of people who just want to like Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney let's put on a show uh, these are very very serious people these are the people who report directly to the mullahs and so the treatment we got there was beyond anything you can imagine for one thing most jazz festivals in the US would not have you there for a week prior to your gig showing you the country, feeding you food, putting you up in five-star hotels, providing you with anything you needed whatsoever. Um, to see, to travel to Isfahan, to travel to Kershan, to just see the countryside, to meet all kinds of people, no jazz festival would ever, ever, ever offer that to anybody. Because in the U.S. especially, you're just one slice of, of, of luncheon meat in the midst of a huge, huge hero sandwich. And there, we were the, va basically, we were like, what are you, you know, who are you, why, who, what, when, where, how? Uh, it was an anomaly. And you could feel it, man. You could feel it. It was not like anything I ever experienced at a jazz festival, ever. And they didn't advertise till three days before the event because the, they knew something that we didn't know, so we get to the gig, and a friend of ours that was in Iran said, "Well, you know, we're, you know, they didn't really advertise, so you know, there might not be any people there at all." I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah," you know. And we show up, and you couldn't tell from the people mingling in the foyer because you didn't know if they were mingling from the previous concert. So it was like showtime. So they like just like Spinal Tap. We went from this room to this stairway, and then down this place and then back through this way and never got any inkling that there was anybody in the audience, right? So we get up, you know, we, we decided we'll just walk on stage once they unveil the curtains and they unveil the curtains, no announcement, just boom, right? And we walk on stage, full house, standing ovation right away, ridiculous. It was like, holy cow. And obviously they didn't need much in the way of marketing. The front row was filled with people from the Minister of, Ministry of Culture, including the Minister of Culture and his deputies. And, um, but mostly it was about 85 to 90 percent young people. You know, the kids who go to school and just young, you know, hip bohemians that, that litter Tehran. You know, they're all over Tehran. It, it's a bohemian culture, if you can imagine. That was some of the most heartfelt reactions I've ever experienced in my life. They were not there to coddle us. They were there to see if we just played our hearts out. And we did not hold back at all. I mean, I went out, the first thing I did is I just went and played. I figured the first thing that they need to hear is a soprano saxophone playing the blues and slipping that into the Persian thing. And then from that, it slipped into our tune, and it's like this little melody phrase, you know, the chorus, and then bop, bop, boom, just unrelenting, and it never stopped. We never, we never said, oh, well, geez, you know, we should just, 
you should like play a smooth jazz kind of tune. No. Uh, they reacted to the more aggressive kind of sound we had, so we gave it more and more. I mean, and our bass player, Jerome Wells, was actually up on the stage dancing, which is forbidden. And he didn't stop the concert. Not at all. They thought of it, and he got this huge round of applause for being that kind of brave to move when he's playing, you know. Because they like, you know, I was perfect. I just stood still and played, you know. But, but bass player, you know, he's moving around. And, and I turned to him and I says, says, so, you know, if you do those steps, man, you know, you're going to be in prison. <laughs> and he was like, oh, you're kidding. I said, I'm oh, just kidding, man. Just trying to like, make you a little bit more tense to play better. Well, I wouldn't say they're starved because the Europeans play there all the time. Because uh, they don't have the same problem that we have diplomatically. But we don't play anything like Europeans, and they just wanted to hear what Americans sounded like. We were definitely giving them the USA all the way. jazz video guy and i'd like to thank you for watching did you like the video please click like we love your comments and suggestions and please subscribe to stay up to date with our latest offerings